In Solaris, you start with leaders usually at level 1 or 2 depending on your trait and civic picks. However, there is a specific combination that I'll get to later in the video that lets you start with a level 7 legendary ruler. In this video, my aim is to become the Galactic Custodian before my great leader retires, or my empire dies to Grand Admiral AI at mid-game scaling 2250, or the 25 times crisis that can spawn from 2300. Is this any good, or is this just purely a meme? Well, that's what this video is to find out. We're also playing on the new update, which means auto cannons are nerfed. I cannot abuse them to make vassals. I know a lot of people are getting sick of it. So was I. The AI's also abused it, so I kind of had to do it. Sorry. Now, how does this work? Well, we'll be using the new origin from Paragons under one rule, which starts us with a legendary leader and we gain access to unique ruler traits. Also, this leader starts at level four if you had no other buffs. And for ruler traits, we are starting with Brain Poacher, which gives us diplomatic weight from tech plus 10%, research speed plus five, and migration pack produce free science for each science it's not total and titan of industry which gives us 10 percent minerals from jobs five percent alloys and five percent consumer goods and naive so that we could pick both of these it's not the best but it's also not awful we've picked this so that we can pick an extra civic so that we don't have to rely on rng and you'll see why and most importantly we're starting as admiral and playing on my normal settings as you can see here and we're just gonna play there's no rng this is 100 percent repeatable we won't be going through the story of under one rule unless it matters mechanically because we've already made a video on it. So we start with the luminary destiny trait, which gives us stability and unity and then the traits I was talking about. But as you can see, we are level seven out of 10. Oh, well, you might be wondering, well, distinguished admiralty starts us off at level three if you're an admiral or general. Now this means it's a plus two, not a plus three because you're always starting at one, which takes us up to level six from level four. But we're also starting with vaults of knowledge, which gives us a plus one level. So we're starting at level seven, which means we get three pits here and we're obviously going to upgrade brain poacher which gives us more science more diplo weight and more research speed and we can do it again <laughs> we get 18 of each tech from my migration pack now if you do the maths quickly that means we get 54 tech per migration pack that's insane. And we get another upgrade, which means we can upgrade Titan of Industry, which gives us 10% alloys, consumer goods, and 15% mineral. When we level up more, we can max that out. Now, you may be thinking, that encryption could actually help. Because if we find people and they try to first contact with us, it's easier for them because we don't have much encryption, which means we can improve relations with them quicker and get more migration packs. Yep, yeah, that's the plan. And the other levels, we're just going to do any cancel traits because that's pretty good. And we'll obviously get ship build cost reduction whenever we can, because we still need to build fleets to get a diplomatic weight up. Now, as we play, I'll just go through the rest of the details. The trait wise doesn't really matter. We start with perfected genes, which means our leader who's 22 can live to 145. There's probably the crisis that will stop us getting our goal. It does give less XP gain, but we have talented to kind of negate that. Then we have incubators and ingenious, so we're just buffing every resource pretty much that we can ever produce. We're not going to need too much tech because we're going to get a lot of it from migration trees. We'll still need some. So what we can actually do is use our military fleet to actually explore now which means we can try and find more people which is really nice i love that feature and we will greet xenos with open arms because it increases first contact discovery we're still going to build some research because it's always nice especially early on and we do have this arctic world but we can't really settle on it because we're desert but we're going to get loads of migration trees so that's actually fine we want to try and find as many planets as we can and we've already made an encounter somehow please be an empire we can settle our first planet starfall we need to continue to remember to move our fleet because it doesn't have an auto explore like our agenda's done, we get a bit more happiness, and we're going to make sure we go unifying promise to get this new technologies thing from the origin. It's a bit more tech, which we do need a bit of early on because we're not going to get first contact for a little bit. We already found another person. Let's do that first contact. That's an actual empire. You can tell because it's a science ship. For a first tradition, we are just going to go prosperity. We can just buff ourselves up a bunch more, cheaper buildings, more resources from jobs, less upkeep. It's really good. We might go diplomacy to really lean into that migration pack. It reduces is the cost of it. It's honestly pretty good. We're going to go energy grid because we are kind of energy producing empire. Just a little bit. Hydro base. The standards really. Now the science ship surveyed all of the planets. We can just send it to explore as well and start building. I can't only ship when we actually have the alloys. And another empire over here. This is beautiful. Just hope they're peaceful towards us. And our planet Steve can now be settled. You might be wondering where these planet names come from and <laughs> titles such as a Grand Marshal King Steve who is our legendary still seven leader. Planet names ships such as the fleet of naval incompetence they are pretty incompetent look why are they all the way up here even though we sent them up there comes from the patreon starts from just a pound and it greatly helps out the channel i'm also going to build another science ship because 
I want to find more people. The quicker we can get the galactic community, the better. I think the only issue is our unity sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. The hardest thing about this build is just microing this fleet because you can't queue it up because you don't see anything. They constantly move them. Ah, we found more orders. Annoying. How do you think that science play was wrong? I'm just going to get rid of that. I, I do not have the unity at the minute. I don't want to build unity buildings, quite frankly. It's actually crazy how much edict fun you just get now for free. Like, I already have capacity subsidies. Doesn't even hit this limit. I mean, my leader is level 7. They are giving 70 edict funds, so it's actually pretty nice. Thank you, game, for letting us have level 7 leaders from the start. Early. Ah, we found someone else all the way up here. Chat GPT, that's not good. We can't get a migration treaty with them. Also, there's no point going call guns now because auto cannons crash. To ruin strategic coordinator if we ever get there might be a little bit helpful i doubt we will though i see this is the issue with using your fleet to explore if you run into something you have to fight them united states postal service right let's be very peaceful with them friends yes embassy we need positive relations or improving to get a migration so this is where our tech can just get boosted we're gonna get their pops but also we go from 141 tech to 195 we're currently getting 18 in each just from diplomatic networking not bad early on as well as the research speed we're getting 10 percent as well not bad but factions now a little bit of unity boost everyone's xenophile and egalitarian they're trying to make me their subject wow no that's not happening because you're overwhelming oh shut up we've not built any fleets go away here we got disruptors researching probably the best weapon now i don't think it gives that much fleet power but it's fine okay this agenda's finally finished unifying promise which means we can go to new technologies get our output a little bit better on tech then we shall expand the counter prosperity is now finished honestly shared desk is probably really good to get more envoys going we're gonna go for the galactic custodian we need to make friends of everyone and nova romanian though friends i'm just gonna make some corvettes now so that we get more influence for power projection and we might be able to vassal people honestly without oil cannons because we've just stockpiled so many alloys because of not having to get too much about tech and we get 10 percent more from jobs those are colonized this ocean was with the uh postal people we have uh, our migration treaty with and next i guess we go diplomacy to reduce diplomatic influence costs and we can get more acceptance we can get unity from embassies things we're actually lacking and now they're trying to be my subject i do not want them to be a bulwark they'll drain everything from me yeah, literally they're already pathetic <laughs> i didn't use auto gathers guys this still works i guess because i am playing mid game scaling i don't know there's free warriors there and then the star droids there annoying now we actually can't do that to the uh post of service because they got a vassal the humans there we go. We get buffs because we did that. And the Illuminate Treat has improved a little bit. Yeah, our economy is just completely fixed now. Monthly food, 32. Alloys, two. What? We'll go for that. <laughs> I won't have to ever work any food jobs. I need 36 for this migration treaty. What we can do, they still haven't fixed this. Each favor gives five, so we need eight favors. So I can give them 10 of mine and some energy. Worth it, guys. Get that migration treaty, and we go from 274 science to 328 from a migration treaty. I don't know where all the other empires are. I have communications with every empire I can see. So we're basically just waiting. An ocean world that's really good at minerals. The more you know. Our tech's just going to start flying now. The 10% research is actually really good. This amplifies our tech speed i can almost subjugate them they have inferior fleet Systems just the economy survey. now steal favors by improving and we get plus five diplomatic septum oh i'm dumb i could get a migration treaty with the humans probably try and do that and we finally found someone else nice we're meeting more yeah we can get that migration treaty we go from 411 tech to 467 each tech gets 54 from that migration thing <laughs> we're getting 162 tech total just from migration treaties not the worst our capital produces almost 300 so almost half just from migration you also do a secret ELT to maybe eventually do a war against the uh, postal service to make them a subject there we go we found people astonished oh they're over here yeah not having all accounts does make this a bit harder to subjugate because I can't have inflated fleet power not completely OP now it's still good the vassal <laughs> it's harder to get there creators we can get more research speed we should start to snowball now I'm just gonna mass by alloy when we can as well we have so much energy trust cap and growth that means they'll like us more i think the Inari council Empire beautiful they are pacifists like migration only needs 13 oh they'll just be my vassal as well <laughs> oh this game i'm not gonna do any to gain science i want that purely to be from the migrations oh, but now they won't give me migration treaty oh that's really annoying i should have done that 
Atlantis. You know, bears and immortal public. You know, they're at war. As long as I can get a migration tree with you, I don't care. They, it's only minus five. I could just send them resources to boost that up. There you go. Have 7k energy. There you go. Migration tree. 484, 538. It's <laughs> just from one migration tree. Well, Republic will do the same. Embassy for some unity as well. This is like just full di diplo plays. Migration tree is minus 10. Let's just send them resources. Oh, we got on Paragon as well. They're not that bad, actually. There you go. We'll take you. Mainly because I wanted a better leader there. And we can get that migration tree again. 538, 592. We're getting 280 from migration trees. Probably do communications as well. They're already a vassal as well. Wow. EP2 nil. The Sonic Psionic. And let's improve relationships with you. They hate us. They really hate us. Yeah, have some minerals. You look like you eat them. And we can get another vassal. I only have 10k fleet power. I think that's everyone in the galaxy. Maybe there should be someone up north here. Yeah, we the Great Wolfen and Galactic Community. Now we need to try and dominate the community to win this video. We are friends. We come in peace. Have some minerals. We're only consuming 0.62 on migration packs because of diplomacy reducing the cost by 50. So it's actually quite free science. We're not really paying that much. We've got our max power projection. So we have still plus two influence. Galcom is here. We are third. We need to try and dominate this a bit more. Diplomacy is now finished. It does give us 10% diplomatic weight. My good transcended learning. Even though they nerfed it a bit, I think it's still quite good. We're almost stopped. Probably change our diplomatic stance to cooperative to get more diplo weight. Diplomatic grants gives us more and an envoy. Now we're top. We need to wait 20 years to get the community. Then we can move on from there. So we just need to build up while these 20 years are going on. Next, we're going to go politics as we can move the galactic community way faster than hopefully. Aggression tree, they're sending it to me. Thank you. They know. And we can get another one here. <laughs> 126 of each. They broke the migration tree. You. Oh, just so I can get this fast, I'm going to have to make them a prospectorium, which means we lose some science, but we can gain a lot of their advanced resources. Oh, another migration tree just sent to us. I forgot about the Starnish. <laughs> oh, they'll be my vassal as well. So the all kind of thing just stops it being easy to get vassals. I still can. I still have 35k of disruptors. It's really not that bad. The only people I can't vassalize now are those who have vassals themselves. That's the only thing that stops me. Like, is overload minus 800. What I can do is just declare war on them to make them a tributary like that. <laughs> and they literally only have 4k. Yeah, it's not even fair. No, it's... What is going on? Oh, that was so weird. We won already. <laughs> did all my migration trees just get broken? Half of them did. I'm only 54 now. Wow. Well, that's the negative of the pick. How is King Steve doing? Oh, I just died. Yeah, we can. Oh, this is this is dumb. It's still the same, guys. It's still the same. Not my fault. I can get even more tech <laughs> for migration trees. Sure, we'll go for that. Just for the memes. <laughs> I know I said I was going to be the custodian, but I pretty much already am. I'm literally just have to wait to get Galactic Council. Alive. And I've already vassalized every empire in this galaxy. This star is very strong then, I guess, if you rush migrations. We're going to call it there because I do have exams and kind of wanted to do a little quick video. Auto cannons seems it wasn't entirely the problem with vassal spam. You can still do it, as you can see. Maybe I'll turn down mid-game scaling to 2225 so that I don't have as long on easier. Grand Admiral from the start is ridiculous. I'm trying to find the settings where it's not easy, but it's not really hard. It's hard because I never keep the same build, so I never test if it's the build or if it's this. If you did enjoy this video, then you like the time I played with unemployed pops. That's right, no jobs being worked. Everyone could not work like this. It was, it was stupid. It, just click it. You'll see what I mean.